again, transfer pricing can come into play. So documentation is real important. And then where is your supply chain function occurring? You know, there has been organizations that have supply chain organizations and a lower cost uh, tax regimes. This is Tom Fox. What is the intersection of tax and compliance? Why should every compliance professional work with their corporate tax department to ensure more effective compliance programs? In this podcast series, Taxman, join myself and noted tax professional Tracy Howe as we explore the intersection of tax and compliance, as well as other tax issues that every business executive needs to be aware of for their efficient commercial operations. Taxman is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network. In this episode, we look at the intersection of tax and supply chain. Hello, everyone. This is Tom Fox, back again with Tracy Howe. First of all, Tracy, welcome back. Hey, thank you, Tom, and I am the tax man. So, Tracy, today we're going to take up a topic that, unfortunately, has become more prominent over the last couple of years, and even this week with the Russia invasion of Ukraine, I think, has become even more hypercritical, and that's tax and supply chain. One of the things we saw in the pandemic was many companies with long-established supply chains perhaps not single source suppliers, but close to single source suppliers, really found themselves scrambling when huge swaths of the world were shut down because of COVID-19, certainly before the vaccines became available. This week with the Russian invasion of Ukraine, we've had the largest amount of economic sanctions delivered by any administration in the modern era. So companies are struggling with that. And it really brings up this topic that you and I both want to talk about, which is the role of tax and supply chain. And I'm going to expand that to compliance because compliance also has a huge role in the supply chain. So could maybe start with the basic, how can tax help supply chain to contribute to a company's ability not only to acquire goods and services at the lowest possible cost, but plan for these business eventualities that seem to make it even more challenging. Hey, thanks, Tom. And it, and it truly is a, a critical issue. Supply chain for an organization, especially an organization that manufactures is in, in a substantial delivery of materials and services, you know, there's such a critical component in the acquisition of goods that are either consumed or provided in the delivery of services or just manufactured. and if you think of supply chains, the traditional focus is just on the acquisition of goods, which would be the quality of the goods and the cost of the goods, and then the delivery of the goods for consumption or later sale. But in each one of those steps, Tom, there can be a substantial tax component in each one of those steps of acquisition costs, which would include Some, If you're buying goods in foreign jurisdictions, there can be transaction taxes such as GST or VAT. And then there are terms and conditions that can be incorporated to mitigate those with who's the purchaser, where's the title transferring, and Tom, you and I have worked on that, title transfer, where does the buyer accept title. Tom, I'll use an example. If a company's buying raw materials in a third country in the shipping terms would normally say title transfers international waters. You know, that's a good thing for the buyer because that means if I'm buying something in the Russian Federation, for instance, if I take title on international waters, that's a good thing because it shouldn't trigger any transaction taxes. However, if you're not paying attention and supply chain acquires goods from the Russian Federation and takes title within the territory of the Russian Federation, guess what? That could trigger a VAT liability of 15 to 20%. So if the supply chain is not interacting or they haven't, don't have a relationship with tax and tax isn't in the game, that can add a, a 15, 20% component to cost of goods transaction. Really affects a company's cost of goods sold, Tom. 
Tracy, could that same type of analysis or even rigor help a company plan for disruptions in the supply chain? So, for instance, if supply chain looks for alternative suppliers or perhaps they even go to an alternative region of the world, can TAC step in and, and do an analysis that would at least give them an estimate of what the costs are going to be so there's none of these 10 to 15 percent, even 20 percent surprises on the back end in addition to the disruption of your physical supply chain? Yeah, sure, Tom. And that's one of the things that is needed is is, is to provide supply chain with the data that's beyond the cost of good or the cost of material or the cost of service. You can model out the liability that a multinational could incur. Say they have five different possible sources for goods and materials. You can model that out, what the tax additional tax burden would be in each one of those. And Tom, even talk about a proactive tax jurisdiction, tax provider, a good tax man. There are instances where if you've got two or three different sources, you can go, a good tax guy can possibly check to see if there's any tax incentives that either exist or that they can go negotiate. You know, some commodity type products, you can negotiate some tax incentives. So they need to be modeled out, Tom, like you said, and, and provide that for a very good decision on procurement of goods. Tracy, how does a constant interaction between tax and supply chain help mitigate the risk of emission creep and the tax implications and attendant penalties plus taxes that can occur? Once a relationship is formed between supply chain and tax, that's a good thing. You have established a relationship and it's understood how tax can assist supply chain in the procurement of goods and services. And at the same time, at that time, you need to document the process, document the process and provide a framework for an organization. That's something that's created at a given point in time. And creative people are going to expand their roles. They're going to be looking for goods and services in different locations so you can have a mission creep. And so it's important for tax to have that relationship with supply chain. So as their functionality changes or they're acquiring new goods in different locations, they need to be close and document the changes and update the changes. New issues come to play. New tax issues can come to play if you've changed your sourcing of materials and goods, different different challenges and different jurisdictions. So mission creep can occur just by attrition. Time goes on. People are focused on different things. You forget to interact. And and so you can get out of bounds and impact the company by not keeping fresh in the relationship and documenting the processes, Tom. I wanted to end by asking you, what do you see as the elements for a tax-efficient supply chain management if you were going to sit down with the, the supply chain folks? Some of the things that you could have a a top-notch supply chain, Tom, there's certain circumstances in where you might have a special purpose entity, you might call it a supply chain entity, whose sole purpose is supply chain. There's other opportunities to look at the entire scope and what you're doing and what you're selling, where you're manufacturing, what you're selling, and you can create some tax opportunities and bring value based on special purpose entities. The other thing, Tom, that brings value with transfer pricing is coordination of the transactions in a supply chain with transfer pricing. In a previous segment, we talked a little bit about transfer pricing and procurement of goods can have a real impact and documentation of transfer pricing can have a real impact and help the organization as originating from the supply chain. Another thing is is make the compliance with the tax laws and regulations. It's always important. Supply chain, there's a big spend in an organization. So making sure that all the documentation's in place for the purchasing and selling of goods, and especially if you on-sell it to affiliates, again, transfer pricing can come into play. So documentation is real important. And then where is your supply chain function occurring? You know, there has been organizations that have supply chain 
organizations and a lower cost uh, tax regimes. You know, if you have a supply function, supply chain function in Ireland, for instance, which is a lower a lower tax regime. Tom, those it refers back to those special purpose entities, and again, it, you can't emphasize enough the importance of documenting the process. So I hope that hits the high points, Tom. And where's the best place to own IP literally across the globe? What about capturing newly created IP? M&A activity. This is where tax is a very high risk, which should impact how something's acquired. Asset acquisition versus purchasing an entity. Hidden risk that can suffer through to five years after an M&A transaction by a local entity can trap the IP, for instance. So taking a look at this early on, i.e., having tax at that M&A table is critical. And what about domestically? Well, it can also be an issue for a U.S. company inside the United States. Where do you manufacture? can be a large number of incentives available to negotiate with state and local localities around tax regimes, pricing of goods and services. What about EBITDA and the bottom line? If operations does not have tax with a seat at the table, an important component or the rest of the story can leave many challenges in getting your cash home. Sales and use taxes on acquisitions can be mitigated with structuring a transaction. Tax should not dictate operations, but rather provide an umbrella for an entity to operate in the most effective structure going forward. Of course, the key here is for tax to be a part of the discussion, to be at the table. And the same holds true with compliance having a seat at the table. But when you have both of those organizations, it gives you the opportunity to plan so that hopefully there are no surprises down the line. This is Tom Fox. Thanks so much for listening to this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you'll join us in episode four, where we take up tax and supply chain. In this episode four, we looked at tax and supply chain. Obviously, in the era of the COVID-19 pandemic, supply chains have become incredibly more important, both in terms of resiliency and your ability to switch suppliers. But now you overlay such geopolitical events as the Russian invasion of Ukraine, which occurred during the recording of this podcast. You see why supply chains are even more important. Tax can work and should work closely with supply chain to help contribute to an entity's overall ability to acquire goods and services at the lowest possible cost. Not the pricing of goods and services, but the mitigation of additional costs, such as sales use, taxes, VAT, GST, and international jurisdictions, and avoiding inverted tax costs that supply chain wasn't aware of. So what are some of these? Well, obviously, cost, supply chain is mostly focused on procurement of goods, as it should be. But entities acquiring many of these uses can result in huge U.S. sales tax cost liabilities when compared to utilizing other entities in a supply chain. Without the coordination and interaction, it can drive up the cost of goods sold, some examples without full consideration of tax and operational risks. Tax-effective supply chain coordination integrates tax planning opportunities into the supply chain. The location of the supply chain activity, the geolocation, the control of risks, such as economic and legal risks in coordination with a compliance function. What about constant interaction? This is significant and important because it will help mitigate the risk of mission creep, which can cause supply chain and tax to interact in a way that does not really help in the overall pricing model. Lack of integration and coordination between supply chain and tax can lead to transfer pricing of goods in an unfavorable position. Objectives to be preserved by supply chain include documenting the process, following that process and structure, and maintaining that. What are some of the elements of an effective supply chain management? Well, specialized entities with proper and limited functions and risks. Transfer pricing coordination, including location of purchase entity and centralized management. Three, compliance with tax laws and regulations. Four, documentation retention of transactions, which can affect both transfer pricing and audits. Five, location of employees involved in the supply chain. Where physically are your employees? And then six, locating the supply chain functions in a centralized environment. So the importance of supply chain cannot be overstated in 2022 and going forward. And I hope you will consider these points 
in integrating tax in your supply chain. I hope you'll join us in our final episode, episode five. We're going to take a look at the intersection of tax and ESG. This is Tom Fox. Thanks so much for listening. This is Tom Fox again. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of Tax Man on the intersection of tax and compliance. If you have any questions with Tracy, you can reach out to him at LinkedIn. He's at Tracy Brian Howe. Tax and compliance are a topic which are not discussed enough in the compliance profession. And if you're a CCO, I would urge you to go down the hall and talk to your uh, chief tax officer or your tax department about how they can help bring about a more effective compliance program. Taxman is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network.